Good morning. How are you this morning? Have a chair. Come sit down. Tuck your feet in. And I hope you have a little blanket or a little something to cover your shoulders. Because it's, it's nice and cool today. It's probably about 64. It's nice. Uh, let's get started reading. Strong Delusion and Lies, Chronicle 2 of the Abyss, by Brittiani A. Christian. That's me. So let's get started. Chapter 7, Making Plans. Rose searched, searched through the crowd for Abby and Joshua, and finally found them only a little ways behind her. She went to Abby and grabbed her hand. She could tell that Abby had been crying too. Abby and Joshua both smiled at her, as if to say they understood what she had been feeling. The tour guide said they were ready to go back to the bus and that there would be another tour tomorrow of the other holy sites in Jerusalem. Rose didn't know if she would be up to that tomorrow. This tour had been very tiring for her. Abby got in the bus first and Joshua helped Rose up the bus step. She didn't realize how tired she was until they walked to the bus. She was grateful for Joshua. He seemed to be able to discern how a person was feeling. He was such a good person and Rose loved him very much as a brother. On the way back to the hotel, they chatted am amiably about what they would do next. Rose said she was anxious to go on to Babylon to see the abyss. Abby and Joshua talked about whether they should take the excellent highway that had been built into Babylon and drive themselves, or whether they should fly straight into the into Babylon, as they had an excellent new airport there. Joshua suggested they wait a day or two before making up their minds, and Rose and Abby agreed. When they got back to the hotel, Rose wanted to go straight to their room to rest. And when they pressed her to go to lunch, she told them she would order a sandwich and soup from room service and take a nap. Abby and Joshua decided to take a walk and look at the shops close by and find a place for lunch. They held hands and walked down the street looking into windows at all the beautiful things for sale. Abby showed interest in a handbag and Joshua insisted on going in and buying it for her. She was really excited it was in her favorite color, teal and by a top-notch designer. Abby joked with him that she was going to have to buy a whole new outfit to match the bag. Joshua laughed and kissed her and told her that that could be arranged. Joshua took the package the bag was in and carried it for Abby. Oh, Joshua took the bag that the package was in and carried it for Abby. He then suggested they stop at a cafe that was close to the store they had just left. As they walked, waited for lunch, they talked amiably about many subjects, including the tour, which Abby had really enjoyed. Suddenly, Joshua's face became somber and he changed, changed the subject. Abby, I know I told you we would talk about this sometime, but maybe it's time to discuss why you don't want to marry me. Abby had a look on her face like a little frightened bird, ready to fly away, but Joshua reassured her. Abby, if you don't want to discuss it now, we don't have to. No, no, you're right. We have to discuss this. 
I just don't know where to start, Abby said with a slight frown on her beautiful face. Why don't you just start at the beginning, he assured her gently as he touched her hand. She then told him everything Rose had told him at Christmas. He listened intently, not wanting to miss anything she said. When she came to the part about not being able to have children, he stopped her. Abby, do not let your fear of not having children get in the way of our happiness. I love you so much. If we never have a child, that is all right with me. I want to be with you. I want to spend the rest of my life with you and grow old with you, if the Lord should dare. But you deserve to have children. You are still young. I will not keep you from having a family and happiness, Abby replied as tears threatened to fall from her eyes. Abby, I have two children that are in safekeeping in the Lord's arms in heaven. Let me repeat this. I don't know. I had a note alert. Abby, I have two children that are in safe keeping in the Lord's arms in heaven. If I never have another child, that would be fine with me. The most important question, Abby, is, do you love me? Joshua asked softly. Abby looked at him and tears once more threatened to fall from her eyes. She grabbed her handkerchief from her purse and dabbed at her eyes. She then looked into his warm brown eyes that held nothing but kindness and love in them. And she answered him. Joshua, I care about you more than I could ever tell you. You are in my heart. You are the best person I have ever met. You love God with all your being, and I couldn't find a better man if I searched the world over. But do you love me? Joshua asked patiently. Yes, yes, I do love you, Abby murmured, looking steadily into his eyes. Joshua thought his heart was going to jump out of his chest with happiness. He reached into his ja jacket pocket and brought out the smell, the small. He reached into his jacket pocket and brought out the small velvet box he had offered her at Christmas and opened it. The diamonds on the ex exquisite ring sparkled and danced with fire in the lights of the restaurant. But Abby did not look at the ring. Her attention was totally focused on him. Abby, you are the love of my life and I long to share my life with you. Will you marry me? As he looked into her beautiful blue-green eyes, time stood still for Joshua. This was one of the most important moments of his life. And heaven, along with him, held their breath. Rose woke with a start. She was shaking. She was having that dream again about Mikkel, but this time something was terribly wrong. Mikkel was standing there in her dream trying to warn her. She tried to listen, but could not hear what he said. Suddenly, a horrible black hole opened up with an apparition standing next to the swirling abyss. Then the creature turned into a human being and pushed Mikkel into the blackness. Rose could only stand there watching, paralyzed with fear. Rose started screaming the name of Jesus. She could still hear herself screaming Jesus as she woke up. She was terrified. Shakily, she walked to the bathroom and poured water into glass and went back to the bed and sat on the edge of it. 
She drained the water glass and it soothed her jangled nerves. She was puzzling over something that she had seen in her dream. Yes, now she remembered. The creature had turned into a human being who was very familiar. He was a very popular figure on the world scene. Just then Rose was startled by her cell phone ringing. She reached over for the phone on the nightstand next to her bed. She answered without looking to see who it was. Mikhail's voice came over the phone. How are you, my beautiful lady? Oh, Mikhail, Rose answered as her cheeks blushed up at his words. The terror of the dream evaporated as she listened, comforted by his voice. I am doing well, and you? It's almost time for me to come and get you. I'm so excited about seeing you again. I was wondering if I might be able to come early and speak to you alone for a moment. Rose smiled at the excitement and wondered at it. Well, of course, call me when you come to the hotel and we can meet in the lobby. Rose, Miguel said, I don't know what has happened to me. Ever since I met you, you are all I think about. I can't eat or sleep. I know this may sound crazy, but I don't think I can let you go back to America without asking you something. I will call you the minute I get there. Mikhail hung up the phone in his excitement without saying goodbye to her. Rose sat on the edge of her bed and wondered what in the world that was all about. Then she remembered the horrible dream and prayed aloud, Lord, thy will be done in my life. I don't know what the dream is about or why you are warning me, but please, Lord, don't let me make any foolish mistakes or do anything out of line with your will. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name, amen. And she began to get dressed to meet Mikhail. Mikhail rushed out to his car and hurriedly got in it. His only thought was seeing Rose. He had to see her and talk to her. He was very nearly heartsick with his desire to see her again. Suddenly, the cell phone rang in his pocket. He answered without looking at it. Dr. Gorbieva, he said in English. A heavily accented voice came back at him in Russian. So, my friend, I finally reach you. Yes, Mikhail answered in irritation, wanting to be done with the conversation so he could leave. Everything is in place. We are only waiting for your confirmation so we can go according to plan. The voice came back at him. Yes, yes, I know. Something has come up and I have to take care of it before I can do anything else, Mikhail told the voice. Oh, yes, the pretty American woman you are seeing. Yes, we have been watching you, Mikhail. I hope this distraction will not keep you from what, needs to, what, from what needs to be done. You have not changed your mind, have you? The man on the other end said harshly. No, no, I just need some t more time, Mikhail stammered, his heart feeling as if it would explode in his chest from the horrible fear that was creeping into his body. They were watching him and rose. Yes, I will give you a few more days. I will call you soon with the information, the voice said before the phone clicked off. Mikhail sat there for a few moments, his thoughts in disarray. He knew what he had to do. He had to see Rose. Her beautiful face appeared in his mind like a lifeline. He must see her again and right away. He started the car and hurriedly pulled away from the curb. He then rushed down the road, paying no attention 
to the car that pulled up after him and followed. To be continued. What is going to happen between Abby and Joshua? Will she let her fears get in the way of their happiness? Or will she fling caution to the wind and marry Joshua? And Rose, what in the world was her dream about? And what did Mikhail's urgent call to her mean? What is he going to ask her? And who is Mikhail's mystery caller? And what is that all about? And what about Babylon? Will they go there and unravel the mystery of the abyss? Find out next time in Chronicle 3, Stones of Emptiness, coming soon. And remember, all my books are on Kindle and paper on Amazon.com. So dear friends, that's the end of Strong Delusion and Lies, Chronicle 2 of the Abyss. I hope you enjoyed the book. I enjoyed reading it. I, I enjoyed writing it. I feel like I was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write it. It was, it was a, a remarkable experience. I love writing. I haven't been able to do any writing since then, but because I've been ill, but still, I love, I love books and I love writing books. But anyone, dear ones, I just wanted to tell you, thank you for joining me this morning. I hope all is well with you. Please, if you have any comments, please uh, give me a comment. I will answer it. Uh, if you need prayer, please. I love to pray, and I do pray for everyone. And my prayers do get answered. But you know, you have to also remember, when you get to be the age I am, I have lived for 75 years, and my body is not what it used to be. It, bodies wear out. That's just a fact. And I mean, you know, uh, we just have to remember that God is in control. And, you know, He is the one that determines our days on this earth. And who knows how long, much longer I have. I may have several years. We just don't know. Or the rapture can happen. And it can at any moment. Dear friends, if you don't know about the rapture, please read my, my first book, which talks more about that. And I thank you for coming with me on this journey with Rose, Abigail, Joshua, and Mikhail. Okay, dear ones, I'll see you next time for Stones of Emptiness, Chapter 3 of the Abyss, by Brigitte a Christian, on, in paperback and on Kindle on Amazon.com. Bye-bye.